The following program has been rated GE by the Kenya Film Classification Board. It is therefore suitable for general family viewing. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's nice to meet you again. Uh, on our last uh, lecture, we were talking about the right heart, isn't it? Yes. yes. As we think about it in details, we are able to find out that the greatest uh, foundation of misery starts from, the, from which point? It's trying to, have, uh, to insist on my right heart, meaning insisting on my own righteousness. Everyone, you understand, right? So if we just remind ourselves shortly of what we spoke about last week, and then we're going to continue also uh, this week, and I hope that this evening, I hope we can talk about it and all of you can have a lot of fun. And so last week we spoke about uh, the incidences that is causing us, that the right heart is leading us to, right? And then now, uh, when we see in the society, just uh, to do it quickly, in the society, because people, they insist on their own right heart, what happens? Now there is a fight and there is a blame game and now there is a lot of uh, unrest even in the society and even in the family as well. One of the things that is uh, making people to fight is because for, for sure in this one I am right and in this one you are wrong. That's why uh, husband and wife they fight <clears throat> and that's why father and mother and uh, even uh, daughter and uh, mother, they fight, and such kind of things that are happening in the society nowadays. But then one of the most important thing in this lecture today is we have to know what should I do with my right heart. Do you understand? What should I do with my right heart? That is the most important part of this lecture. But then as we review, uh, we find out that if you are the standard of what is right and wrong, then you cannot listen from other people. You understand? The moment you know, hey, I am the standard, this is right, this is wrong, but then it is only right and it is also wrong based on your own self, isn't it? When you feel that this is wrong, then you don't want to do, you, you don't want to do it, right? But when you feel that this is right, even though another person sees that this is wrong, but then now you're thinking that you should do it because it is right in your own standard. That's why we say that when you become the standard, when you become the gauge of what is right and wrong in your life, for sure you cannot realize your true image. That's why it is very important to consult, to ask your friend, to ask even those people who do, does not know very well. Because for sure, they might have an idea that you don't have. And then another thing we were able to talk about, uh, this lady was eating another person's cookies, right? You all remember this story, isn't it? Yes. And so I don't have to repeat so much. But then this lady, when we look at the characteristics of those people who are right, they never think that they are wrong. You understand? Until she went into the plane, and then when she realized that her cookies were still there, she could not break her heart. You understand? Then there was rage, grievances arising from her heart. Why is this old man doing like this? Look at his face. Look at how he's eating my cookies. You understand? So kind of things start to arise in the world of our heart. Why? Because we think that we are right. But then in real sense, there is one thing that we have to remember for sure. I can be wrong at any time. You understand? So before I insist of my own thought, before I insist of what is good to me, there's something that I have to think in the back of my mind. I may be wrong. Everyone, you understand? Because you may be wrong, for sure you cannot trust in yourself. But when you look at all those people who trust in themselves, they always think that I am right. You understand? When you look at those people, the uh, most divorced cases in the world, one thing is that either the husband was right or either the wife was right. You understand? That's why the moment the wife is right, actually, wife is the one who has to submit to the husband, isn't it? But then the moment the wife thinks that I am better than my husband, then they cannot live together. Why? Because that even though she's a woman, but now she wants to become a husband in the house. You understand? And then two husbands cannot live in the same house. You understand? And now a fight is going to come, they're going to divorce, children are going to fall into misery, and now a lot of pain is going to happen. Not only to the divorced, but then also to the children, even into the society. And a lot of things which is attached to that is going to come up. And so like this lady, she thought that she was right, isn't it? Also, you remember the couples who went out, isn't it? 
Yes, they buy the chicken, they want to eat, but suddenly when something different happens, when it comes, they have done a good act to bring back the money, right? But then at long last, what happens? They are not the couples, isn't it? If you save someone from fire, then at least you want to go home and watch the news quickly, right? Isn't it? Oh, I'm a savior. Then when you walk in the street, at least people should recognize you, right? But then this man, he is the person who did not want to be recognized by this woman. Why? They are not husband and wife. Actually, they are just dating. So if my wife sees this kind of thing, then what's going to happen? I will be in a big trouble. You understand? So even though there is the outwardly there is the good act which, is, which can be seen, but then inwardly there is something that is already rotten as well. That one we can say that is a fruit that we cannot eat. When the fruit is rotten inside, outwardly it looks so nice, right? But then if you just have a bite, you cannot eat that fruit. Then you just have to throw it away. You understand? So outwardly it looks like, okay, they are good people. They are doing good things to the society. They are even being kind to return such amount of money. But then at long last, we find out that they are the people who are not good and then the people who are cheating on each other and there's a lot of problems like that. So everyone, when we look at it, the characters of the right heart, one thing that we are able to see clearly last week is that right heart narrows the perception, isn't it? It narrows the perception of what? Of the way I see it, the way I think about it, the way I do it, and everything just become narrow. It means everything just become my world. Do you understand? So also this right heart is making us to heavily lean on the other side. When we heavily lean on the other side, we cannot listen from the people from the uh, people on the other side. Do you understand? The moment we are leaning on that side, at long last we cannot help just but to be what? Isolated. Do you understand? Yes, we may be walking in this world, we may be talking, we may be laughing, we may be doing so many things, but at long last we are going to find ourselves being isolated already. Why? Because... We are the people who are only exalting our own right heart. You understand? So the moment you exalt your own right heart, one thing that you have to know, you are going to lean on the other side. And then now fellowship and communication is blocked. Then at long last, you are going to fall into what? Into isolation. Then the next stage of isolation, maybe you cannot help us but to commit suicide. You understand? Because you cannot live in your own world for 10 years. You cannot live in your own world even for one week. It's very difficult. Do you understand? But people now, they think, oh, let me live. This is my life. And now they say, this is my style. You have to know that those people, they're the ones who are already holding to their own heart and their own right mind. Of course, to say the truth, we need the help of others, isn't it? But those people who say that I'm living in my own world because this is my world, it means that I don't need any interference. You understand? I don't need any interference. I don't need anybody's help. I don't need anything to do with you. Everything that I have, I am satisfied. Such people, they are already isolated. You have to know like that. That's why uh, through this time when we uh, have this kind of lectures, I hope that each and every one of you can be in a position to think about it in details. When you think about it in details, you don't just have to listen to the lecture and just come sit and listen, but then you have to be in a position to think and also to review your life and to check what is happening in your life and what is happening in your heart at this time. Are you the person who is, on, are you the person who is exalting your own rightness or you're the person who is able to throw away your heart? When you're able to throw away, you're the person who is able to live with anyone in this world. Do you understand? And you're the person who is able to accommodate anybody in this world. Do you understand? When this king thought about the party, when he thought about the happiness of others, when he was able to think about it in details, then he was able to spare the life of the person who was supposed to die. When, if he, he would only lean on the side that, who kissed my wife, right? Then that person cannot live. Then the joy and the happiness, which was in the heart of all those other soldiers, they could not, could not, they could not retain that joy. But now this king is a person who thought about it in details, and then he was able to give the joy and the happiness to the majority, the soldiers who lived and served their country. That's why those people who think on the first dimension of thought, 
they cannot help just but to ruin the life of other people. But then those people who move to the second dimension of thought, they cannot help just but to give happiness to others. You understand? That's why uh, through this lecture, we are able to see those people who ruined their life. Why did they ruin their life? Because they are right. For example, we spoke about uh, this person who burnt himself for one, because of $10, right? Yes, just because of $10, he's now burning himself and putting his life into misery. And it's not only himself, even his family, even everybody. Then everybody is crying right now. You understand? They're not crying. Actually, they are not crying because this person burnt himself. They are crying because this person is insisting of paying that $10. You understand? If he's the person who is not going to insist on paying $10, hey, what is my life compared to $10? Let me go home, then I'll solve it with the, uh, with the taxi driver tomorrow, right? When I'm sober, isn't it? Hey, what is my life compared to $10? Then he can, he can easily go home, then he can easily think about it and solve it with the taxi driver tomorrow. Then he will have avoided so many problems and so many mistakes, right? Right, everyone? Yes, it is very important for us to be able to think in that way. But then those people who cannot think into that direction, the people who are already insisting that they are right, and others, they are wrong. And now they are only blaming each other. That's why they even demand for their right until they lose their last, the last blood in their, in, the, in their veins. You understand? That's why such people, they cannot become the leaders in the society. And so today, let's think about... Uh, Today, let's continue with our lecture, and then we are going to talk about the right heart that narrows the perception. Those people who insist on their right heart, they're the people who are now heavily leaning on one side. When they lean on one side, it also easily narrows their perception, their way of thinking, their way of doing things, and the way of living their life. When you look at it uh, clearly, this man who burnt himself because of $10 just because of his $10, uh, he narrowed his perception and may, he was heavily leaning on one side. You understand? If you hold your right thought, you will fail and you will fall into pain. You understand? The moment you are holding to your own right heart, you are the person who is going to fail and you are going to fall into miserable situations and circumstances. Why are you miserable? Why are you difficult? Why are you the person who is always talking about what other people they have done for you? Why are you always blaming other people? You have to know just because of one thing. What is that? Because you are right. You understand? Because of that kind of a righteousness, you are now leaning to the side of blaming others. You are now leaning to the side of complaining towards others. Even though someone does something good to you, because you are accustomed to complaining, you cannot help just but to complain the rest of your life. You understand? So that's why I say that this is not something that we just have to gather the knowledge. But this is something that we truly have to think about in details. You understand? Why are you insisting that you are right? For heaven's sake, if I may ask, what is so right about you? You understand? Some people, they think like this, I am smart. Then I want to ask them, how smart are you? Can you build an aeroplane? No. Then you say that you are smart. Isn't it? Can you create another human being? No. Then you say you are smart. That's why I want to ask, how smart are they? You know, there are some people who have a disease thinking that they are smart. This is a disease, right? Hey, I'm smart. Because they are smart, because they are good in something, what do they do? They block the ear of listening to others. You understand? Last time I told you about uh, the women who think that they are beautiful, right? Hey, I'm the only beautiful woman here. Then all those other people, even if they are ladies, they are all what? Men. You understand? So when, they, when she look at them, hey, they are not my standard. Isn't it? When she look at them, she's the only beautiful woman. The rest are what of? You understand? Then can, can a human being live with what of? then it means that she has to go and live in her own beautiful world. Do you understand? That's why such people, they don't easily get married. Do you understand? Why? Oh, all these people, there's no handsome man like me, isn't it? Then all other people, they are what? Men, she's the only woman. 
That's her own world. She's already isolated. She's already leaning, heavily leaning on one side. Do you understand? If she stands on the mirror, she's the standard, not the mirror. Do you understand? At least if I stand before the mirror, then I can ask myself, who is this? Do you understand? But then when they stand before the mirror, they think, hey, this, there's something wrong with this mirror. Do you understand? Ah, that's not me. Then they are already demon possessed. Do you understand? They are already demon possessed with beauty. That's why they don't do what? They cannot think that other people, they are also beautiful than them. You understand? That's why when they are not recognized, now they have pain and grudge in their heart. You understand? If they are not acknowledged, what do they do? They easily complain so much until you cannot bear. If they are not recognized, they even try to recognize themselves. You understand? Hey, I'm beautiful. How come you didn't see me? You understand? Those people, they are already crazy. They, they have already some mental problem. Right? So when we talk about the right heart, it also easily leads people to what? To arrogance. I, being isolated, isn't it? They're not just being isolated, but they're also becoming arrogant. Why? Because when you can only use your mobile phone in the house, then is it a mobile phone? Is it a mobile phone? For example, you have a mobile phone, right? If you can use it only in the house, then it is what? Useless. Do you understand? Mobile phone, even if you go to the toilet, does it know that you are doing some business in the toilet? It just rings automatically, right? Then you have to pick, isn't it? Actually, if you can only use it in the house, then it's not a mobile phone. It's useless. Do you understand? Because it doesn't know anything to do with the outside world. Those people who just insist on their own right thought, <clears throat> I'm right, they are also useless. <laughs> Do you understand? Like a mobile phone that can only be used in the house. They are also what? Useless. That's why there are so many useless people in this world nowadays. You understand? They are, we say they are good for nothing. Not because they cannot do anything. There are so many good things that they can do, but because of just one thing, I am right than this other person, that one itself makes them useless. You understand? That's why we need to broaden our mind. We need to open, we need to open the gates of our what? Of our mind. You understand? Actually, a country can grow economically if there is trade, right? When there is the border where people they can come in and then they can also go out, then that country can grow. You understand? But then those countries that doesn't develop it means that they have not opened their doors to the outside world. Such a mind that cannot develop, such a mind that insists on their own right heart, they are like communist countries. You understand? Then nobody can go there, nobody can come out of that place. They only know something to do with themselves. You understand? Those people who know anything, just something to do with themselves, such a person is now like this useless mobile phone. You understand? The phone that can only be used where? In the house. Countries that, they not de that does not develop. Countries where you cannot even go. We have many communist countries, right? Hey, you go there, then even they are, they are wondering, hey, are you, are, you from, uh, are you from this world? <laughs> you understand? When they see you, they think there's something wrong with you, right? When you see them, you also think there are many things wrong with them, right? Why? They don't know anything to do with the outside world. There are so many people who are living like that because... There is no flow of heart. Nothing can come in their heart. Nothing can grow out in their heart. But the things which are piled inside of their heart, in their mind, is such a dirty and filthy things. You understand? The best way that we can develop in our heart and in the world of mind is only if we are able to open the borders of our mind. We should be able to broaden our heart. We should be able to broaden our mind. That one, those, that one does not make us arrogant. What is arrogancy? Those people who despise the thought of another person. That is in itself to be arrogant. You understand? What does else, what else other people think about me? For example, I can ask, what do you think about me? You have nothing to think, right? Yes, but at least what she thinks about me is very important. You understand? Then she can also ask the neighbor, hey, what do you think about me? Am I good? You understand, everyone? Am I good? Am I, am I smart? At least what he will say is more important than what she thinks. You understand? Then, those people, they can easily grow in their mind. 
And so everyone that is a, uh, that is a frog in the world, isn't it? You all know this story, isn't it? And so there was a mother frog. And then one day, the, the baby frog, isn't it? They come out. The baby frog, they came out. And then they went and they saw a big cow. Initially, the mother frog said what? I am the only biggest animal in this planet Earth. But then this fro little frog they were playing, then they saw a cow. Wow, this cow is so big. And now they went back to the mother in there. They went back to the mother, right? What are they telling the mother? Hey, mom, today we saw one animal which was so big than you, mother. What do you mean, my children? I am the only biggest animal in this planet. Hey, mom, you are lying. No. Now she wants to insist, right? Now she's demonstrating. Then she breathes and then she swells, right? Then big like this. Then the children, hey, mom, don't even try. It's what you're doing is not even called big. And then the mother swell and ask, like this? Hey, mom, come on. Mom, you are lying. It's not even close to what you're talking about. You know the frog's size, isn't it? You can imagine the size of the frog and the size of a cow. Even you understand, right? Hey, mom, what's wrong with you? Don't even try. And then the mother swell and is, she swelled until she did what? She burst and died. Why? Because she has never seen someone who is bigger than her. You understand? Children, when they saw, now they could understand. Hey, mom, so you have been lying to us like this? Mom, just look at yourself. You are so small. But because she could not break her pride, now what did she do? She busted and died. Those people who cannot break their own pride, they easily become arrogant. You understand? And then there is no fellowship, and now there is no communication. Then at long last they become arrogant, and they don't listen to anyone. They become isolated, and now they are suffering. Like mother frog, isn't it? There are so many people, even though they don't behave like frog, but then they live like that, isn't it? Are there some people like that here? Yes or no? You don't even know, right? <laughs> but then, you have to think about it in detail. You may be like that person today. Even when we cannot solve the problem, we should not be worried about it. You understand? There are so many problems that we go through. Actually, those people who have the right heart, they make you so that you cannot fellowship with anyone. You understand? But then when we cannot solve the problem, for sure that is not something for us to worry about. Because when you throw away your own thought and judgment and open your heart towards others, and exchange and have fellowship, you can easily be free from your problem. Do you understand? So people, they try to solve their problems, but then they don't try to open their heart, they don't try to throw away their own thought, and they don't try to fellowship with others. So that's why that problems become their own problem. Do you understand? But then when you're able to open your heart to your teacher, to your mother, to your father, and say to your mother and your father the problem, then this problem is already solved. Do you understand? Actually, it is no problem. Do you understand? But because we are not able to open our heart, we are not able to throw away our own thought, that's why a problem becomes a problem. you understand, everyone? So nowadays, in this society, there are so many problems. One of them is youth problem, isn't it? There is the youth problem, and there are now youth, there are people who commit suicide, then they have a lot of sexual problems, and also, there's a lot of school violence and game addiction. Why? Why do we have such problems in this society nowadays? Because we are not able to open our heart in fellowship. Because of a right heart, many youths they fall into trouble and such kind of things. Game addiction, drug addiction, sexual problems, school violence. Even here in Kenya, we are able to experience so many school violence. Why? Because... People, they insist in their own right heart. Recently, I saw, uh, last year I saw in the news, some students, they burnt the school because they were not allowed to watch a football match finals, right? Heaven, just imagine your school, your property. Why do you burn your school and your property? Because you cannot watch a football match. Between school and your education, 
and a football match, which one is more important? Education, right? But now you ruin your life because of your own right to it. Even in families, there are a lot of problems. When you look at the characters of the right heart, our right heart is the one that interferes with unity. You understand? Our right heart is the one that brings dispute. You understand? But our right heart is the one that also leads us to misery. That's why to think about it in details, they, think, they thought that I am right, I did it well then that one in itself interferes with unity. You understand? And my, my, my brother is better than me. It's okay to think like that, isn't it? I am better than my brother. That is the beginning of disunity in the family. You understand? Oh, my brother is better than me. Then I should learn from my brother. Then I should ask my brother. Then I should tell my brother. Isn't it? But I am better than my brother. Then... I should not even talk to my brother. Which kind of a person is he? Why is he even doing like that? Then already, even though you're brothers and sisters, but now there is disunity in your heart. Then at long last, there's going to become misery in the family. You understand? When misery and fun, uh, comes in this, uh, in, into the family, actually when there is disunity, dispute is going to arise. After arising of dispute, now there is what? Misery even in the family. You understand? That's why it is very important to think about it. Even among married couples, for husband and wife, they fought while they were watching TV. Do you know what they are fighting about? Actually, women are very sensitive, isn't it? Right? Yes. See, uh, ladies here, you're also very sensitive, right? You're not? Okay, probably we don't have ladies here. But then, anyway, let me assume so, right? But, you know, ladies, they are very sensitive towards what? They are men, right? And so husband and wife, they are watching TV, but now there's one beautiful girl that appears on TV, one presenter, right? Then the wife asks, hey, honey, is she beautiful? Actually, it's like a joke, isn't it? Oh, yes, she's really beautiful. Then do you know what next? Do you know what next? Because she's beautiful, why don't you go and live with her? <laughs> she is better than me, then why are we living together? <laughs> do you understand? Now they are fighting... Because of someone in the screen. Do you think even that person is affected? Do you think even that person is affected? No. Actually, it was even just like a joke. Hey, honey, is she beautiful? Yes, of course. She's better than you. Really? And now suddenly she got angry and then oh, I'm going to divorce. Hi, right, let's divorce. I cannot live with you. Then the husband also thinks that hey, it was just a joke. But then do you think such a thing, that there's a joke even in that? In the heart of ladies, is there a joke? With such a thing in the heart of ladies, in your heart with such a thing, is it a joke? Actually, it is something that they can easily throw away, right? It's something that they can easily break at their pride, right? But then now, husband is insisting. Hey, but it is true, right? It is true, of course, right? But now, the wife is saying, one, hey, let's divorce. Why are they fighting? Because they are both right. Actually, just watching, watching, watching TV, then they should enjoy, isn't it? But now, they are fighting because of what? Because they, someone said that she is beautiful than you. That's why I said that all ladies that think that they are more beautiful, all people around them, they are men. You understand? Even when they are watching TV. Actually, when we think about that right heart, now they both think in their heart, hey, I should stop. I should stop saying this. I should stop doing this. But now, are they stopping? The more they think that I should stop, the more now they are fighting about it. You understand? Yes, the wife is thinking, hey, I should stop. <laughs> this is nonsense. I know my husband loves me. I know my husband cares for me. Why even am I saying like this? Actually, I should stop. But now they're not even stopping and they continue to doing what? They are fighting because they cannot break their pride. You understand? Actually, one of the effects of a right heart is that now there's a big fight and there's a very big differences. So there were two families uh, from the beginning. One family, whatever thing the father said in that family, they would do it perfectly. But then another thing uh, from the other family, whatever thing that the father would say, they could not do. So the family in which things were not working very well, they came and asked the family 
whereby things they are working very well. So they ask, whenever I tell my, my whenever I tell my sons and my children to do something, they don't do it. But then when I see your family, you know, whenever you say something, then they do it so well. What is the cause or what is the reason? And then now the father, the, this father called and said, Come and I will show you. And so he called the, his, his son, then they told them, Take the ladder and put the cow on the roof. And then family where things are not working very well, they said, Hey dad, that's nonsense. Why do we even have to put cow in the roof? You understand? And then now he called, the, the, he called him and said, Come. Then they went to the family where everything is working well. And then the family called the sons, Hey, come here. Take the ladder and put the cow in the roof. And then immediately the sons, they were struggling. Then all of a sudden the cow was in the roof. What is the difference? What is the difference between this family where the, everything is working well and in this family where everything is not working well? Actually, there is, a, there is a difference between obedience and being submissive. You understand? Disobedience is just to decide not to follow. You understand? Those who are disobedient, they decide not to do what? To follow. But then those who are obedient, they follow when they understand. You understand? Hey, take the, cow, take the ladder and put the cow in the roof. That is something impossible, everyone, right? Why do we even have to put cow in the roof? Those people who are just but obedient, they reason like this. You understand? But then those people who are submissive, whether they understand or they don't understand, they do what? They take the action and they, they challenge themselves and then they move and they try to do it the way they have been instructed. So the difference between the first family and the second family is that in the first family, the sons, they are very obedient. You understand? But then in this second family, the sons, they are very submissive. So those people who only receive the word and try to implement that word without putting their own thought, that's why we say that they are submissive. And so when we look at it clearly, there is the limitation in the domain of obedience. In obedience, I have to do it when I am able to do it. You understand? In being obedient, when I am able to do it, let me do it for sure. But then being submissive, they have to easily find a way and they have to do it. You understand? In submission, now they have to go under the person who is saying that. Ah, this person is word is slow, then I have to submit to that one. And then they have to find a way of doing it. You understand? There are those people who are receiving the word, but then they obediently follow that word. You understand? There are those people who receive the word, but then they submit under that word. And so in the world of obedience, there are limitations. But then in the world of submission, there are the people who enters into the world whereby they have to go beyond their limitations. That's why we can easily say like this, the side effect of a right heart is what? People, they just want to receive what they want to, to listen. You understand? What is comfortable to them, they want to follow. What is not comfortable to them, for sure they don't want to follow. Everyone, you understand? For example, because of a right heart, maybe we can talk about the genocide that happened in Rwanda. You all know this story, right? Actually, in Rwanda, why are they fighting? In the year 1994, this was the world's most cruel genocide. Almost in 100 days, one, over 1 million people they were killed. You understand? This is something which is very painful in the African continent and even in the old world. But then, why is it that now there are people who are even fighting and killing each other? But then the reason is just because there was the people who insisted that they were right. You know, the Tutsi, they thought that the Hutus, they are wrong, isn't it? And Hutu people, they also thought that the Tutsi, they are wrong. You understand? That's why from the beginning, hatred, grudge, began to, they began to fight and they began to kill each other. After that, the end result of all that, we can see that even women, they were raped, and there was also high spread of what? High spread of HIV, high growth of HIV AIDS. You understand? Why is that all these things are happening in such a short time? Not because 
something big happened. But because they only insisted that hey, the Hutu, we are right. The Tutsi, we are wrong. Now it brings revenge and it brings fight and it brings dispute and even citizens killing their own, own people. You understand? And then country arising against its own country. And then we can see that until today, when they think about this, they don't even, they, they don't even want to mention about Hutu and Tutsi. Actually, if you go to Rwanda and say that you are Hutu, you're going to be arrested and you're, you may be sentenced to death. You understand? Why? There's no one who is right. There's no one who is wrong. We are all one people. You understand? That's what it means. But then one of the side effects of, of, uh, of having my own right heart, this is what happens. You can see. The only thing that happens is because there are all people insisted that hey, they stole from us. No, they stole from us. And now they begin to blame each other. And such a big things happen. You can see the migration, right? Many people they were migrating from their country they are going to become refugees in other country. Then even until today, the people don't want to go back to their country. <laughs> you understand? Why? Because there were not people who were able to listen to others. Even in, when we look in the Bible, now there's the story of King Solomon. You know the wisest king in Israel, right? What's his name? So one day, these two harlots, they came to the, to, the, to the king. Hey, king, this woman stole my child when I was asleep. Because this woman slept, and then he slept on, the ba on, on her baby, and the baby died. So, king, this is my child. And now they are fighting, right? No, this is my child. No, this is my child. No, this is my child. You understand? And then the king said like this. Okay, okay soldiers, you bring a knife and divide the baby into two, and give one to the, to the, the other mother and another one to the other mother. Actually, that's when you can know the real heart of the mother. And so the true mother said what? No, 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 don't kill the baby. Please give her. You understand? Why? She's the real mother, but then would you just give your child? Right now, she's not just giving a child. The real mother is saying, hey, just take. It's okay, this is your child. I don't want you to kill the child king. Why is she doing like that? Because she realized that if she insists that this is my child, then that child will die for sure. You understand? If she insists that this is my child, this is my only child, then for sure the child is going to die. But now because she really loves the child so much, what is she, what is she doing? She is right now letting the child to go so that the child can live. Actually denying the child is life for the child. You understand? It looks like now she's throwing away the child. But then throwing away the child is to gain the child. You understand? What is wisdom? Wisdom is to deny that right thought. You understand? Wisdom is to deny the thought that you are right. When you are able to deny the thought that you are right, you are able to gain happiness, you are able to gain joy, you are able to gain life from other people. Those people who insist on their own right heart, they are true right heart. What is now the true right heart? The true right heart is to throw away your right heart. You understand? What is truth? Yes, it is right. But then the true right heart is to throw away your right heart in life. You understand? Yes, you want to become happy. You want to become joyful. You want to become so that such a person who looks so blessed. What is the best way to gain happiness? Is to throw away the heart thinking that you are right. You understand? Is to put aside the heart thinking that you are okay. You are right. Then throwing away that heart is true happiness. When the real mother, the real mother, even though she becomes a fool, even though she becomes a liar, even though she becomes despised, but then she was able to throw away her right heart. You understand? She was able to throw away her right heart. And so the right heart to know, the true right heart is to know how to throw away your right heart. You understand? And so that's why today, through this lecture, when we compare, we are able to see, when you compare the two people, the one who paid taxi fee and the real mother who threw away the heart and saved life, you can realize how important it is to throw away your right heart. You understand? When you compare the two stories, you are able to realize how important it is to throw away your right heart. And so even in conclusion with our lecture today, what are we talking about? 
We are saying that the best way to gain happiness is to be able to throw away your right heart. Yes, you have a right heart, but then what is wisdom? Throw it away. Everyone, what is wisdom? Throw away our right heart. As we spoke about uh, right heart, isn't it? And then uh, you have a question and you have something that you want to ask, then I want to give, freely give you this chance to ask questions. My name is Robert and uh, I'm thankful to be here. I have a question concerning the right heart. Uh, many times I have the right heart. The reason I have the right heart and I fall in arguments is because of trust. I cannot trust other people. So how can you solve trust matters for you to receive from others and to solve the right heart? Second question is concerning the right heart you mentioned. Uh, there is a limitation for domain of, uh, of obedience in case of right heart. Could you please talk about that again? Okay, Thank you. taking on your first question, you don't trust the people, right? But then, do you trust yourself? Do other people trust you? No. You don't trust other people so they don't trust you, right? And, but you are only trusting in yourself. It means that you want to solve the problem of trust on the other side, isn't it? But you don't want to solve the problem of trust in you, isn't it? The best way to solve the problem of trust in your side is to think like this. I am wrong. You understand? I can be wrong. Actually, you're very smart. Actually, you look very smart, isn't it? Right? Don't you think you're smart? You are, you are, you are smart, right? To what extent? A very small extent. Just a very small extent. But you, you say in your mouth at a very small extent. But in your heart, you are smart than the person sitting next to you right now. Isn't it? Then how can you trust that person? You understand? You cannot trust him because the small extent in your mouth is different from the extent in your heart. That's why your heart is already moved to the side of what? Hey, I'm better than him. What can he tell me? That's why they also don't trust you. And now you're already blocking the communication and you're blocking the fellowship. And then you're already isolated. Why? Not because you distrust others. Because you are supposed to distrust yourself, but now you trust yourself and distrust other people. It means that there's no trade in the world of your heart in relation to others. You understand? Then the second question that you asked was, what is the connection about being submissive and being obedient, right? Is that what you meant? In relation to right heart. Actually, it's not just in relation to right heart. It is in relation to life. You know, those people who follow the law, they, just, they have a limitation according to the law. They only do it according to the law. Not because they want, they want to do it, but... Yes, the law is saying I do it like this. So they fear the consequences of the law. You understand? But those people who are doing it beyond the law, they can take risk, isn't it? Then they can only fear the consequences of not doing it. You understand? But then those people who are doing it according to the law, they only fear the consequences of the law. If I don't do it according to the law, I will be punished. But then those people who think beyond the law, they will only think about one thing, the consequences of not doing it. You understand? So the first thing, they are obedient to the law. But then being submissive to the law, they can think of the consequences of not doing it. You understand? That's why, that's the difference between being submissive and being obedient. To be obedient, even strangers can be obedient. Uh, you tell them, okay, bring the chair. Or oh, I'll bring the chair. Okay, take the chair back. Or oh, I'll take the chair back. Then, you know, bring again. Take again. Are, do you think they're going to take it back and bring it back again? Do you think so? They're obedient. Okay, bring the chair. Oh, yes, I should do it. It's older than me. Okay, take it back. Oh, yeah, I should take it. Why did I even bring it? Okay, bring it now. Is he okay? You know what I'm Then they bring it. Okay, take it back. They, do, they don't say anything. They look at you. They take it back. Then in the process of their going back, hey, bring it. Hey, you also can come for it. Then they walk away. They are obedient to certain what? But those who are submissive, ah, oh, his word is law. 
Oh, let me bring it. Let me take it back. Let me bring it. Let me take it back. Then it becomes joyful to do it. You understand? But then, oh, I bring it. Okay, I'll bring. Oh, hey, take it back. Okay, I'll take. Now come. Hey, why are you even calling me? Am I your child? Why are you sending me? Like, even my mother cannot tell me to bring, come, bring, come. Even my mom is not doing like that. Why are you the only person who's doing like that? You understand? And then can they follow you? They can follow you to a certain extent. You understand? Actually, if your hand, if your hand cannot bend, it's very difficult to eat, isn't it? But then because your hand is able to bend, it's able to take the food in the plate and bring it to your mouth. But imagine that your hand cannot bend. Then you have to make a tall spoon that would have to bring food in your, in your mouth, right? It's more, it's more difficult to eat. You're only eating comfortable because your arm can bend, isn't it? That's why if your heart can also do like this, you can live a very comfortable life. But if your heart is like this, you're very comfortable. You're uncomfortable to receive other people's hurt. You understand? Is there any, any other, another question? Okay, thank you. I'm Silvio. My question is, let's say someone has a sexual problem or addicted to sex and has fears or fears to share his own thoughts and uh, don't want to share it to other people or has that fear. How, he, how is he or she going to overcome the internal conflict? Yes, there is internal conflict because of fear, right? But then you know, you have to know the main cause of fear. Actually, now the greatest problem is not a sexual problem. The greatest problem is the fear to overcome it. So the fear to overcome it is in two ways. You overcome yourself, and then you share it with another person, right? But then it is just the same with what he was saying. You don't have anyone that you can trust to tell it to another person. That's why you are just comfortably living with it. If you are bitten by a snake, automatically someone will rush you to hospital, right? If you are bitten by a snake, then would you look for the person that you trust to take you to hospital? It's, it's meaningless, right? When you are bitten by a snake and you are just smiling, hey, I don't trust you to take me to hospital. Then do you even have the mouth to say like that? And so if you are truly hit by this sexual uh, addiction and you cannot overcome it, then you're the person who can cry. Hey, I need help. You understand? Then you're going to look at from the person that you trust. But then you're looking for the person that you trust because you're not beaten yet. You understand? The best way is to realize you're beaten. If you realize, then sure, for sure, you can go beyond it. You understand? You can talk about it. Even can, you can even go to your friend. It means that you have no one to share your heart with. That's the problem. You understand? Because you have no one to share your heart with, that's why you cannot open your mouth and talk about it. You only trust yourself. That's why you are suffering. That's why those people who trust in themselves, they cannot open their heart to other people. And now there is no communication. You understand? Yes. And so today we have to finish our lecture here. Thank you very much. I will see you next time. You can clap for yourself. <laughs> <laughs>